Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux and this is for the advanced tutorial. So I've already done few tutorials uh, related to ethical hacking and penetration testing in my previous version that's the basics for Kali Linux. If you have not gone through that then I would probably recommend going through that the reason being that if you know, want to proceed with this course properly then you need to know the basics for that and you will only get that when you go ahead and do the basics for penetration testing that I have taught you before. So uh, speaking about password cracking including ones for Linux, Windows, WEP, WPA2 that's for wireless and even online passwords using THC Hydra we can now go ahead and crack any type of passwords using Kali Linux. Now I thought it might be worthwhile to begin a series on password cracking in general and password cracking is both an art and a science and I hope to show you the many ways and the uh, sub subtleties involved in this. So we will start with the basic principles of password cracking that are essential to all password cracking techniques followed by some of the tools and technologies used then one by one I'll show you how to use those principles and techniques effectively to crack or capture various types of passwords out there. So the first thing would be the importance or and methods of password cracking. So uh, passwords are most widely Okay, just let me go ahead and start up my VMware. Okay, so passwords are like uh, most widely used uh, form of authentication throughout the world. Let me just start it. Okay, uh, a username and a password are used on computer systems, banks, accounts, uh, ATMs and many more. The ability to crack password is an essential skill to both a hacker as well as the forensic investigator. Uh, whereas the forensic investigator needs to hack the passwords for accessing the suspect's system, hard drive, email account, etc. Although some passwords are extremely easy to crack, some may be extremely difficult as well. And in those cases, the hacker or the forensic investigator can either employ greater computing resources such as a botnet, supercomputer, uh, using the GPU or ASIC, etc. Or they can look uh, to obtain the passwords in other ways. And these ways might include insecure storage. In addition, sometimes you don't need a password to access the password protected resources. For instance, let's say for example, if you go ahead and replay a cookie, session ID, Kerberos ticket, an authenticated session, or other resources that authenticates the user after the password authentication, you can access the password protected resource without ever uh, knowing the password. So uh, if you want me to make this more clear, let me give you an example for that. I'll just go ahead and open the Facebook web page. Okay, I believe this is denied. Okay, so I still have other ways to access that. Let me go ahead and just open this up <coughs> let me check if I could go ahead and access that okay let's check Okay. Okay, I believe we won't be. I won't be able to. Okay, let me take to you to a Gmail account. A Gmail probably I will be able to log log in. I believe. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you a few different ways. The first thing would be actually going ahead and hacking the password, and it would it can be through like uh, using the key logger or keystroke login. Or uh, the second thing would be to actually go ahead and uh, get the hash keys and convert that uh, the MD5 or SHA5 or whichever it is the, the format is. Or we could actually go ahead and trick the user by using social engineering. Or uh, there's another way of cookie hijacking or cookie stealing. And cookie hijacking, cookie stealing means that let's say for example if I go ahead and access my uh, Gmail account for once. After that, I don't actually log out 
or let's say for example uh, I log out but over here when I am logging in it will ask me to save the password and I will save the password. So whenever next time I am trying to log in it will automatically go ahead and show me the passwords. So getting those cookies over the internet without me accessing this computer is called as cookie hijacking or cookie stealing. So as I told there are different ways to actually go ahead and do that. So Sometimes these attacks can be much easier than cracking a complex and a long password. I will do a few tutorials on actually how we can go ahead and crack these passwords on various replay attacks in the near future. And look, look out specifically for my upcoming tutorial on stealing the Facebook cookie to access someone's Facebook account. You can do that as well. Not only Facebook but also Gmail and um, Yahoo or any kind of other accounts. It doesn't matter which exactly until unless they are let's say they are actually accessing their account over the internet. So let's start with the basics. The first thing would be the password storage. In general passwords are not stored in clear text. As a rule passwords are stored as hashes. Hashes are one way encryption that are unique for a given input and these systems often use MD5 or SHA1 to the to hash the passwords. So I'll just go ahead and show you uh, as to how uh, it exactly looks like. Mm, let me see. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and open this. I'll just show you the image. So this is how a hash password looks like. So this is the actual stuff that's ABCD. It's converted into the hash one. Up uh, we have one two zero, and that's again converted. And this is how it looks like in total. So it's just a one-way encryption. It cannot be decrypted back. But there are still ways that we can go ahead and try to do something else. So in Windows operating system, passwords on the local system are stored in the SAM file, while Linux stores them in uh, slash etc slash shadow file. So these files are accessible only by uh, someone with the root or the system admin privileges. In both cases you can use a service or file that has root or system admin privileges to grab the password. For let's say for example DLL injection with uh, samdom.dll in Windows. And actually if you go ahead and look at my previous tutorials I, I, I have shown you different ways as to how we can go ahead and gather uh, access to a victim's PC and then go ahead and manipulate that. And by doing that you can also go ahead and gather the samdom.dll in Windows. And as of Linux I'll just go ahead and show you exactly where the password is file system etc and this shadow this is the one so this is exactly how it looks like and the passwords are stored over here and I believe these are the hash keys for my password so I won't be actually going around and doing something to that because if I did I won't be able to log in myself so there are different types of attacks to proceed with uh, first of all so the first type of attack is a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack is the simplest and the fastest password cracking attack. Uh, to put it simply, it just runs through a dictionary of words trying uh, each one of them to see if they work. Although such an approach would seem impractical to do manually, but computers can do this very fast and run through millions of words in just a few hours. And millions is more than enough. And this should uh, usually be your first approach to attacking any password and in some cases, it can prove you successful in just a few minutes because normally uh, people always keep their passwords very easy. Let's say for example root at the rate 123 or admin at the rate 123, admin plus 123, admin pound 123 or these are the different types of attack or password at the rate 123 and when I say password the A will be replaced by uh, at the rate and S will be replaced by the dollar sign and O will be replaced by zeros something like that and these passwords are very easy to crack even if you think that they are not and that's how dictionary uh, attack works like and after that we have the rainbow table most modern systems now store passwords in hash this means that even if you can get to the area or the file that stores the password what you get is an encrypted password as I showed you just now uh, over there in the etc shadow file one approach to cracking this encryption is to take the dictionary file and hash each word and compare it to the hashed password this is very time and CPU uh, consuming or intensive a faster approach is uh, to take a table with all the words in the dictionary already hashed and compare the hash from the password file to your list of hashes. If there is a match, you know, uh, yeah, you know the password then. And after that we have the brute force method. 
Brute force method is the most time consuming approach to password cracking. It should always be your last resort. Brute force, pass brute force password cracking attempts. Uh, it attempts all possibilities of all the letters, numbers, special characters. This might be combined for a password and attempts, uh, and it will attempt them. As you might expect, the more uh, computing horsepower you have, the more uh, successful you will be with this approach. So normally people don't use this or they rarely use this. That's what I can say. After that, we have the hybrid. A hybrid password attack is one that uses a combination of dictionary words with special characters, numbers, etc. Often these hybrid attacks use a combination of dictionary words with numbers appending and prepending them and replacing letters with numbers and special characters as I told you before about the password p at the rate dollar dollar w zero r d one two three something like that and that's what a hybrid attack is and there are also commonly used passwords so as much as we think each of us is unique and we do show some common patterns of behavior within our species that's humans one of these patterns is the words we choose uh, for passwords they are number of word lists that have been compiled of common password in recent years, many systems have been cracked and passwords captured from millions of users have been uh, destroyed and displayed to the whole public. By using these already captured passwords, you are likely to find at least a few of the uh, few on the network that you are trying to hack. So, and that would be it for this tutorial, guys, because that's how exactly th these are the different ways as to how we can go ahead and crack these passwords. In the next tutorial, I'll be continuing with the password cracking strategy and the softwares that we would be using to actually go ahead and hack into some specific systems.